Does that hand go? Uh, can you hear me through this one? Yes. Okay, so I'm going to give this to the, other, the others here. Right, so um, thanks everyone for coming this evening. Um, it's really great to see you all here. Um, I'm Tanya Marat from Southwark's Bed Council Housing um, and uh, been sort of working with people on the Ellsbury Estate for many, many years. Um, started campaigning over housing back in 1998, 99, when the council tried to transfer all our council homes to a registered social landlord. We stopped that and then sort of moved on to other stuff. Um, the reason we called this meeting today was because there have been some some victories, some new developments that had, and also because the Aylesbury leaseholders were going through their CPO, and so it was um, a point in time at which um, we needed to um, raise the profile of the Aylesbury campaign again, um, you know, to uh, you know get people to continue the support for the um, leaseholders, but also um, it was a point in time at which. I think things were moving forward generally on the political scene in terms of fighting against um, demolitions um, and, you know, putting the argument for council housing. But since we called this meeting, even more things have happened. So, I mean, I, I, uh, you know, positive things. Um, we can't often report that um, we've managed to, to, to win some games, but certainly that's been happening over the past uh, few months. So the people on the panel here will be able to talk about um, you know each of those each of those things. But I just want to raise like a couple of um, couple of things that probably lots of people in the audience already know about um, and uh, have noted. So um, back in September, um, due to the pressure of um, campaigns across the country, um, the uh, Labour Conference and Jeremy Corbyn's uh, speech at Labour Conference referenced, um, you know, uh, ending uh, estate regeneration that caused social cleansing and uh, in favour of ballots of, of tenants who, uh, tenants and residents on estates where demolition was, was proposed. Then in um, towards the end of the year, London Labour Conference went even further than that and said where there's existing demolition schemes, uh, those should be halted and um, there should be a ballot of, of the estate residents. Uh, and only following that, uh, following a yes vote, should um, regeneration uh, demolitions take place. And then, um, God, I'm just trying to get in, hope it's not a developer. Uh, and then, um, you know, as Sean will be able to tell you uh, later, the um, Mayor's Estate Regeneration Guidance, uh, which was consulted on last, um, last, hello, yes, February and March, thank you, Piers, um, was discussed at the GLA and there was a motion which Sean um, proposed and she'll tell you all about that where the GLA voted um, that that guidance should contain a requirement for ballots. Now that's kind of on the political side in a sense and also political but more to do with sort of what's going on on the ground. People will have heard about Haringey and the magnificent anti Haringey Development Vehicle HPV campaign that's been taking place over the last year. There's a judicial review going ahead and also uh, movements inside the Labour Party in Haringey. And if anyone's, um, you know, enthused enough to, um, you know, attend the funeral of the HDV, well, that will hopefully be tomorrow um, at um, what's called the um, farewell tour of the HDV, which is the Harry Day um, uh, council, full council meeting, where it is hoped that um, it will be voted down at full council. And there's a, um, there's a demonstration taking place tomorrow night there. Um, coming back to... Um, I'm sorry about this, but there's just so much. Um, this is the last thing I'll say. Coming back to where we are now, uh, Elephant Castle, 
you will know um, that there's been a very vigorous campaign um, of local people, local traders, um, students and worker, workers in the area against the Delancey Shopping Centre and the Castle Development, a development which would have uh, provided 979 homes, only 33 of which would have been fake socially rented homes, um, and nowhere for the bingo, the, the bowling alley, and um, very little new space for the traders. Um, that, um, that development has been stalled in the sense that the council did not feel able to, um, to approve that application, so that campaign goes on, and the fact that they didn't vote for it, I would, I would argue, is a significant victory along the way to be seen in the light of, um, of all the other campaign victories that have happened. Excuse me. Excuse me. And they said there would be a public consultation. Yes, three-week so, public consultation. We, we're that. waiting for that to, to happen and pressing for it. For uh, uh, okay, um, West Kensington and Gibbs Green as well looks like that, that, um, that development has been, um, is probably toast as well. Um, and... Um, uh, as we know, the tragedy of Grenfell has put um, the spotlight on social housing and tenants within council housing and social housing, and um, has made people feel and you know demand that uh, the government and uh, landlords now take notice. Uh, and so our voices are, are increasingly being heard in the mainstream. So. Um, the speakers we have uh, tonight, um, I will introduce them one by one. Um, first of all, we have um, Jerry Flynn. I'll probably start that, sorry. There's people filming here. Does anyone not want to film tonight? If so, can you put your hand up? Okay. Right. Um, and the extremely clean toilets are out there and on the left. Sorry, okay. who doesn't want to be So, first of all... Um, Jerry's going to speak, he's from the 35% campaign, he's, all, he's been tirelessly organising um, and writing blogs and doing everything else for the last God knows how many years, um, not just on the Aylesbury but also with Up the Elephant, he's a leading light on that one um, and Jerry is going to um, tell us about um, what's been going on with the um, Aylesbury CPO and um, maybe a little bit about the open. Stand up, please. <laughs> <coughs> Thank you, Tanya. Um, it's on. Is it on? Can everybody hear me okay? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, my name is Jerry Flynn. Um, I'm from the 35% campaign, which is a campaign run by the Elephant Community Network, which is a local group of uh, residents, traders. We got together uh, about 10 years ago now um, out of the redevelopment of the Haygate Estate. We were very dissatisfied with what was happening on the Haygate Estate. And not just residents on the estate, but people living around the estate, as I say, involved even local traders. The Alpha Community Network had, has three principles, ones which we feel most people could subscribe to, which is um, open master planning. 50% affordable housing, was 50% in those days, and um, benefits of the regeneration for all, so anybody who subscribes to those principles can come along, okay, um, can come along and join us, we meet every third Tuesday of the month. 35% campaign is run by the Open Community Network, and it focuses specifically on housing. It's called the 35% campaign because Southern Council has a policy whereby every new development over 10 units should deliver 35% affordable housing, half of which should be social rented. So we're not really not a radical bunch. We're just trying to get Southern Council to deliver what they should be delivering anyway. I have to say we've not had a great deal of success over the years. Um, most of the developments at the other Castle do not deliver 35% affordable housing. Most of the major developments in Southern don't deliver housing and they certainly don't deliver any social rented housing. 
there's about 5,000 new homes either being built or in the pipeline in the Elephant and Castle Opportunity Area, and less than 100 are social rented. Uh, 82 of those are on the Haygate Estate, replacing 1,200 council homes. So we can't claim any great success on that front. What maybe we can claim success on is that we have uh, raised the profile, shone a spotlight, however you want to put it, on what is actually happening. And the Haygate Estate certainly has become uh, a byword for a failing generation. We are supporting the Owlsbury leaseholders for three reasons. Because on the Owlsbury redevelopment, there will be a net loss of social rent housing of about 700 units. Now that is the minimum net loss that there will be. It could be more, depending on the final build-out, as they call it, depending on the final size of the development. And that is after the density of the new development, the size of the new development has been increased from the current 2,700 units to 4,000 4, units. So it's going up from 2,700 to 4,000 units, and yet, and yet, we're going to be losing 700 social rented units. And we think whatever other benefits there might be on the Alsbury regeneration, you've got to admit, there might be some, that is such a fundamental disadvantage, such a fundamental flaw, that it has to be opposed on those grounds alone. Second reason why we're supporting the leaseholders in their fight um, on the Aylesbury is because of the derisory levels of compensation that are, they are being offered for their homes. Uh, leaseholders on the estate are being offered a fraction of what they would need to remain in the area. And that brings me to our third reason for opposing the Aylesbury redevelopment is it's breaking up the existing community. Um, some people don't think there is a community there anymore. There was never a community or never a proper community there. But there is and there always has been and there always as there was on the heyday. And that is being broken up and whether you're a tenant or whether you're a leaseholder, or whether you're what you call a non-secure tenant, or whether you're a private tenant, you will have to leave that estate. And the chances of you returning to that estate are very small, and the chances of you remaining in the area, depending upon circumstances, uh, vary a great deal. They're higher if you're a tenant, but much, much, much lower if you're a leaseholder. Um, we supported the Elsby leaseholders at the last compulsory purchase order public inquiry. There is a public inquiry taking place at the moment to determine whether Southwark Council should be given the homes effectively of the leaseholders, whether the leaseholders should be forced to give their homes to Southwark Council for the compensation that Southwark Council is offering. Um, that compensation could rise at a later date, but basically it's still a forced sale, if you like. And that uh, inquiry uh, is taking place at the moment. It's the second inquiry to address this problem. First inquiry found, if you like, in the leaseholders' favour. It found that Southern Council did not put up a strong enough case to justify the leaseholders giving over their homes to Southern Council. This was, I'm not sure it was a landmark decision, but it was certainly a very significant decision. And it was a decision that uh, was taken note of across London. It was taken note of by other local authorities, by other leaseholders. And um, it was certainly taken note of by Southern Council. The inquiry has already run for about 13 days. Uh, we are adjourned. And we are going to return, all of us, the council, the leaseholders, the supporters of the leaseholders, on the 17th of April. It is a public inquiry. Anybody who wishes to attend can attend, as long as they behave themselves. Um, and it's likely to last for another five days. Um, <coughs> public inquiry. Um, the public inquiry is going to be hearing from our witnesses for the rest of the, for the rest of the uh, for the rest of the time, and for and it will be hearing closing submissions. We have raised over twenty thousand pounds 
for the £20,000 to support the leaseholders at the inquiry. That money has gone towards the leaseholders' legal fees. We have a fantastic barrister. I'm not going to embarrass him because he's not here, but we have a fantastic barrister called Chris Jacobs, Landmark Chambers, and he has worked tirelessly on the leaseholders' behalf. We do, however, need funds to maintain that kind of representation. And so one of the reasons I'm here tonight speaking to you is to try and raise those funds. We need more money, frankly. And we do have a website, and the website is called um, Ellsbury, Right to a Community. I'll say that again. Ellsbury, Right to a Community. And if you just Google that, please give as much as you can or as little as you can. Give whatever you can. <coughs> We'd appreciate it. The Ellsbury Inquiry... The Aylesbury decision not to give Southwark Council the right to compulsory purchase order for leaseholders' properties was a really big decision, not just for the leaseholders, but for everybody else on the Aylesbury estate. The leaseholders aren't just fighting for themselves, they're fighting for a fairer deal for everybody who lives on the estate. And we firmly believe that if we can, again, persuade the Secretary of State not to grant this compulsory purchase order, it will be in the long term, and maybe not without a few ups and downs, for the benefit of the people of the Aylesbury, the benefit of the people of Walworth, and the benefit of the people of Southwark. Thanks very much.